Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. It is the mid, not middle of January, and it's not the middle of February. It is the beginning of February. The beginning of February. Ish. Right? Somewhere what day is it? I like don't The sixth? Sixth? Okay. It's been a long, it's been a ridiculously long week for the Schenkel Bragel clan. <laughs> Uh, and I'm in I'm in Indianapolis, hence why we're driving. Yay! And uh, we just got out of hell, Caesar. No one said it like that in the movie, and I'm really disappointed about that. Yeah, they didn't even do a. Title. Also, I don't think Caesar was in this. I just realized I don't think in the movie that they're making in the movie called Hail Caesar. I don't think Caesar is actually a part of the movie. What about the guy that George Clooney talks to in the scene where he gets kidnapped? Oh, maybe, yeah. I thought that was supposed to be Caesar. Maybe that was supposed to be, but it, it didn't. He doesn't look like a Caesar. He does not look like a Caesar. To be quite honest, you're supposed, like, you're clearly supposed to think that, that um, Clooney is Caesar, or Clooney is playing a man playing Caesar. So this movie, <laughs> It's by the Coen Brothers, and I'm gonna say up front, I'm just gonna get it out there. Uh, this movie got some pretty bad press recently because there were complaints about lack of diversity in the cast, which to be fair is relatively valid. Even, even if you're talking about, oh, Hollywood, well, that's when all the, the stars were white. They could have still had other characters. characters that were not the famous movie stars be uh, people of color. They do have one Hispanic actress who is clearly supposed to be Carmen Miranda but uh, but besides that there's like no oh and there's some Chinese people at the Chinese restaurant that don't have names and there is a one Muslim um, gosh what are uh, this is awful and I apologize what are Muslim it's not priests leaders I know oh. I'm not I would like to formally apologize for my lack of knowledge on this, but um, but they had a, there's a scene in the movie where they where the what was even his job? It was like mar like management He's like manager. Okay, the manager guy like He's the like closest thing we have to main character of it who is um, who's played by Josh Brolin, uh, but for this movie that is clearly supposed to be. Um, crap, this is gonna, I'm gonna have to look up several things, cause here's, alright, here's the thing, this movie is basically, not even homaging, it's just flat out, like, direct referencing old movies and just calling it a different thing. Like, these are specific movies and specific actors that they're, that they're parodying. making, yeah, parroting and making into, like, a thing. So, there was a specific movie, and it's gonna drive me crazy, because I think, I don't think it was Ben-Hur, but I'm gonna double check to make sure it wasn't Ben-Hur. It might have actually been Ben-Hur. Let me double check. Um, so, Hail Caesar, where were we? Oh, all right, so there were no, there were, again, this is a really, complicated, convoluted movie, which is why we're all over the place tonight. But I'm going to get to this first. There are very few people, uh, actors of color, playing characters in this movie. And the Coen brothers, I think it was, or at least one of the Coen brothers, had a really not great answer to that. And it was very like, oh, I feel secondhand embarrassment for you for being that, like, tactless. And I will say up front that, yeah, they could have done better at this because it's a super white movie. It sort of really is very, 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 very much so. And there could have been, I, I could see roles where they could have, they could have done something with it. Hell, there are other, besides Carmen, the Carmen Miranda stand-in, I know that there was at least one, and again, like, I'm trying to pull all the, like, Hollywood old Hollywood knowledge out of my brain and of course on the fly I can't do that but I know that there was at least one one actress in Hollywood who specifically made herself she was um, she was uh, Hispanic and she made herself look as white as possible and and uh, she changed her name and everything so that people wouldn't realize like she she 
dyed her hair blonde and she tried to line her skin as much as possible. And they could have done that. They could have done something with that if they wanted to be and actually using one of the one of the women of color or the fact that there were some there were some actors of color working in and they could have actually played up the fact that there was racism and stuff. Yeah, they didn't really go there and and this it, whole it seems movie like a is a very obvious place to go because this whole movie is about making fun of old Hollywood. And it's all little stories. Like the whole it's like not even little vignettes because they all kind of interweave but not, and that's the other thing, like, not in a way that really connects back to each other. It's not like Love Actually, where, like, all the little stories interconnect. This is more like just one day, and some of the things actually connect back, but most of them don't. So, um, so yeah, I will say that that is a valid criticism, and I think that they could have done a better job about that. They could have made it more interesting, and it is a very white movie. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Besides that, I will say that I liked this movie in parts. I enjoyed parts of it. I really enjoyed certain scenes, but I don't know if I enjoyed the whole movie as a whole. Yeah, I think you can say that. There are certain scenes that are really, really funny and really, really entertaining. Like, sort of like entertaining, like... Good performances. Yeah, good like, performances all around, but there's, there's times where this movie just sort of drags a bit and... It's sort of like you get what they're doing, but it's like uh, it. It feels like aim. It feels like an aimless movie. And I don't know if that's because it was aimless, or because the direction wasn't tight enough that I didn't get what the what the Coen brothers were trying to do. Now I got the I got the references, and I got I certainly got some of the hints and nods, and certainly some of the message. I mean, they had a narrator throughout the whole thing, so. So there's some of that that was just hitting you in the face. Oh yeah, Dumbledore narrates this movie. It took me like maybe a, maybe a minute or two to figure that out. But at one point, you suddenly like see uh, um, Michael Gambon's, I think that's his name, uh, face and like the full Dumbledore like beard and hat and stuff as um, like as he's talking. Like it just hits you and you're like, oh right. That, that, that is the person who is speaking. Now I'm just going to see Dumbledore the whole time. So, uh, yeah. As, uh, but it's, it is a really entertaining in parts. And there are certain scenes that, um, that were delightful. There were other scenes that dragged, but that had good elements and then there were some where I was just like, why are we watching? Like, why is this happening? And I think, but I think the biggest problem with the movie is that it doesn't really connect together well. And I, like I said, I don't know if that was the intent. I don't know if that was just them not being able to put something together. Or I don't know if they were trying to go for something and it just didn't work. Yeah, I don't get... One of the things I didn't care for was... Like, I like Channing Tatum's performance, but I don't know what he's... Like, his it felt whole like there were motivation... Scenes, there felt like there were scenes missing from him, and I was like, I wanted to see more of that character. We can get into the spoilery stuff later. stuff later. But he only has really two scenes, and those two scenes are really funny and good for different... Well, I wouldn't say good. The second one was a little weird. But... But his performances in them really were really fun. But I don't, I don't think that that was enough. Yeah. And that's kind of how it feels for a lot of the threads in this movie too. And there were also a lot of things that were left. Um, it feels like a like a film with a lot of good performances, but not necessarily good direction and not really like, and the writing doesn't connect. I, I'm going to keep saying this. The writing doesn't connect that it wasn't enough. Yeah. I think you could have taken out a couple plot threads and connected things better. Yeah. Um, also, I could name one story. You, you talk a little bit. I'm going to double check um, something. I would have probably removed the storyline with uh, Lockheed Martin. It's really not needed. It Was that a real company? Yes. It's a real thought. company. Did but, they actually did they actually work on the bomb? Um, I don't know if they worked on the atomic project. 
I know they were building jets and planes. I don't yeah. know which part they actually did. Um, I would have removed that entire storyline entirely, and and then you don't have the Chinese restaurant scenes, and then you don't have. I think that they were trying. You don't to... really need the family scenes at home, and you don't need his tossing and turning over whether he's going to stay with yeah, the theater so or leave for Lockheed. I feel like... Because it's sort of really pointless. Cause you know what he's going to do, yeah. He, well, but not entirely, but you sort of do have the feeling that he's just going to... Because they, they, they do have a misdirect with the 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 the, the uh, rodeo guy. Um, mm-hmm. Like, sort of, he's cleaning up the messes that he's sort of not dealing with right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. He comes in and deals with one of the messes, so you kind of lead that, kind of leads you that maybe, you know, he's not needed and someone can replace him. Yeah. At least that's what I was thinking, but, I mean. Also, yeah, all right, I'm confirming, Hail Caesar is, the movie in the movie is clearly supposed to be Ben-Hur. Because in Ben-Hur... The main character, I mean, granted, it's actually, I believe, a a Jewish person. I believe. I haven't actually seen Ben-Hur. I just know about it. But basically, it's a, I believe it's a uh, Roman citizen who is, like, in the ranks, and then he meets Jesus and, and has a conversion of faith. I mean, it's basically, it's yeah, basically, basically this movie. movie. Um, and it's Charlton Heston instead of, instead of George Clooney. <laughs> but, What's the um, difference, really? Yeah, and then, shoot, uh, I know, I know you were speaking, I'm just trying to remember, so there were really specific things that were going on in this movie, so this, that one, and then you see Scarlett Johansson dancing in the water in, in the trailers, and that's clearly, like, that's a very specific actress whose name I could not think of this afternoon, and I can't think of it now. Yes. And it's going to drive me nuts. I would never think of it. I know. It's driving me nuts. And then, um, clearly, clearly, uh, Channing Tatum's character is supposed to be, um, Gene Kelly. Like, I don't see how it's not... I mean, and it could be, like, a lot of other, like, really talented, like, dancers like that, but the whole, like, sailor outfit... Gene Kelly, that was like one of his more... You would know uh, more than me. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's on the town. I think it's on the town. That, that, that Yeah, it is. So, there are these really specific... Like, they're not... Like, they're practically just... Put, like, slapping another name onto it. And parodying them. And par- and But it was like, the parody is so close that I don't... It's weird to call it a parody. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Um, especially because, like, I mean, I caught on to the Ben-Hur thing. Well, I mean, the, they are parroting the actors rather than maybe the films. No, no, I mean, the Ben-Hur thing that is pretty is pretty close. I mean, I guess, like, the behind-the-scenes you're saying they're parroting. But, like, I know I know for the Ten Commandments, they looked at, or they, they sought uh, advice for, for the biblical stuff from various religious leaders like that was a specific thing that happened so that was like my first clue and I think they might have done that for Ben-Hur too but um yeah it's it's interesting because some of these things are incredibly like I I wonder how many of these other of these other uh parts are like, the other parts of the movie that I didn't pick up on as direct, direct references to things actually were direct references. Does that make sense? Yes. Whoever Lauren Lorenz is has to be a parody of someone. Probably. Or, like... I don't know who it is, because I don't know old Hollywood stuff yeah, at Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but obviously, like, if it's not direct reference, it's at least reference to, like, very specific types of people in Hollywood. Um, I'm trying to double-check... If there's anything else, and I'm sorry, you were speaking. I, I feel like I feel like the the movie kind of, as much as it was like my least favorite, or like my least interesting plot thread of the whole movie. I feel like the job offer 
that so so uh, Josh Brolin's character, who is kind of this management guy at the studio, who's trying to keep everybody afloat and trying to keep everything in order and keep try, the studio making movies. Stop, you know, stop scandals from getting out. That's his job. All the stuff. Yeah, he has a stressful job. He ha- he keeps having crises of faith. He goes every every day, almost every day, he goes to church to ask for forgiveness of his sins, even if it's like the littlest thing. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's, and I had to slap a movie star. And, um, and so he gets this job offer, and I feel like if, I know that it's the least interesting part of the movie, but if you take that out, there are no threats. Like, that is the closest thing to a real plot. I guess... But then you also have a series of vignettes, I guess. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm not I mean, saying you, you could, you could there needed to be a better there be needed better. to be a better one. But if you just take the if you're just saying like the only thing you're changing is taking it out, then the movie just collapses yeah, on yeah, itself. Yeah, you need to add more to it. But I'm saying you needed to add more, maybe more to the other vignettes, rather than adding this plot thread that sort of connects them. <sighs> yeah, kind of. I I get what you're saying. So I don't like, know. I don't know if we're being. Hopefully, all of you people have actually watched the movie. Because if you haven't, you're gonna be confused. Just point blank, you're gonna be confused. Um, because I know that we're not making any sense. That's what I'm saying. Um, so so Josh Brolin's character is a lot of it is going through his this day. I think it's been 27. It's 27 hours total more or less and then there's the epilogue but there's 27 hours total in this like story and essentially he uh there are a bunch of things he has to take care of he has to take care of scarlett johansson's character who is this very acrobatic um like the water dancing and i know i know there's a really specific in fact, I will start looking this up while I will do the impossible and try to look this up on my phone while we're talking. But she get, she's secretly pregnant, and they need to find someone for her to marry because she cannot have a baby out of wedlock. Or they no. come up with another plot. Well, it. they do have come up with another plot, but we can talk about it in the spoilers. I don't want to give away too much. Okay. Um, he has to deal with this very serious drama... And the studio head, who's in New York, suggests that they get this cowboy actor to do it. And I think there's one of the trailers that is just the scene of him and the director trying to get him to say the line correctly. It does not work. Um, and, and then later uh, his line becomes, it's complicated. Oh my gosh. That's, like, here's the thing. I wish I hadn't seen the trailer for it because it kind of gives away... Um, Sir. It gives away anyway. a lot of the comedy. Yeah, it really does. Like it's the whole scene. I don't think you watched it with me. I think you were actually like taking a nap, and I had turned it on, uh, on my computer, and yeah, and I was just like, okay, I really want to see this movie. And unfortunately, it's like one of the funniest mo- It's one of the funniest scenes in the movie, and because I had seen it before, very few of the scenes held up as well as that one did. Um. Let me see. Esther Williams! Oh my god, how did I not figure that out? I'm so mad at myself right now. I I could I could slap myself. I'm so mad that I could not remember. Esther she alright, so Scarlett Johansson is clearly supposed to be Esther Williams, who I do not know if she was ever pregnant out of wedlock, but but they clearly uh made her Scarlett Johansson's character's shtick. Esther Williams is. I really, I like to think that someone Obviously. watching this. Oh, no, because it's her. It's what she did. Sorry, I. But, well, I'm. I'm just making a reference that I really don't know at all. Yeah. Like okay. Remember how in in uh, the Great Muppet Caper, Miss Piggy has that big musical where she's swimming and there's all the... That is a direct reference to Esther Williams. Like, that's what Esther Williams did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Um, And then, uh, so... What else are we... um, 
What else are we missing as far as the plot threads? Oh, yeah, the kidnapping. So, um... Oh, also, um... Cowboy guy and the... Wait. Uh, he gets a relationship and... Oh, yeah, he's... Because he's gonna be... One of the reasons that they're or they're throwing him into the more serious role, and they're also throwing him together with the with the Carmen Miranda stand in, stand in um, so that he gets a higher profile. Profile, um, and I'll say this much: like we might as well just they they go on this really cute date, and it's super charming. And I want to know what happens to those two. I assume that they. I'm assuming that they made it work because they had a lot of chemistry. Um, and she was actually, like I said, she was like one of the only women of color in the film. In the film. Uh, but she was super cute. It's uh, Veronica or Osorio. Uh, and she did a really good job. I was actually really, I was really impressed by her little, by her little performance. Because it was, it was a few scenes. Um... And then, sorry, and I'm looking to see who played uh, the secretary, too, because she did a good job, but I kind of only vaguely recognized her. She's been in a lot of stuff. Actually, she hasn't been in anything since 2008. Uh, but yeah, the, the assistant pop for the main, or the closest thing to the main character that we have um, pops in and out throughout the movie. Um, she's good. Like, there are a lot of little roles. Like, almost all the movie is a lot of little roles. Yeah. It's a lot of little roles. Yeah. So, um, I feel like we're jumping around so much. Uh, I'll, so well, I... Well, we were describing each of the vignettes, sort of, like, in a way. Yeah, I was trying to, without giving away too much. Oh, the kidnapping. <laughs> that whole thing. Um, well, first of all, uh, Ned, uh, what's his name in Jurassic Park? Um, Ned. Isn't it Ned? Yeah, it's Nedry. Nedry, oh, I forget his last well, name. Or is it blank Nedry? I don't no, remember. I think his name Newman. Is Ned. Okay, Newman, Newman is one of the kidnappers, but he only shows up in like two scenes. And then the guy from the guild is the other guy who kidnaps him. And then they, they just don't, they're, you never see him again. I feel like, I feel like that must have been another cut scene because there are a lot of scenes where where um uh, the the manager guy is told something happened but then we don't see it and the only thing i can think of is that there's a lot of things that got cut that maybe got cut probably for time because this movie does sort of like it feels like it drags on. yeah it really does um so uh but, uh, so George Clooney's character gets kidnapped, and it is, it takes a while to, for them to officially say what's going down, even though I figured it out, and I feel, we're gonna, we'll put this in the spoilers, like, we won't go into yeah. it, but it is one of those things where I was like, okay, I see what you're going with this, especially considering what they're trying to do in the movie, uh, what the directors and the right, you know, what the the filmmakers are trying to do. I was like, okay, I get it. I get what you're. I'm getting the joke. Um, I I feel like I feel like this is a movie where it's not worth it to see it in theaters. But I like enough of the performances that this is a solid rental. Okay. I just don't think I don't think unless you're I can like, agree with that. Um. I would say rent it, um, red box it. Yeah, um, but let's just talk about the like. We can get into the stuff with the spoilers, and then we can really talk about like our frustrations with it. But let's just talk about the the few things that we did like. Um, I liked that a lot of the effects sort of felt like old Hollywood effects. Okay, I actually did. You know what I did not like about it? The fact that oh, it felt like old Hollywood effects, except that they were like CGI. And we're like backgrounds that were clearly not like matte screen backgrounds. There are so many things in this movie that were not actually where I could tell that they use modern techniques instead of using the old time stuff. And it took me out of the movie. Okay. Like a lot of the Esther Williams esque, like uh, Scarlett Johansson saying looks CGI and looks computer 
it did not convince me that I was watching something that was a movie made for, made at that time. And maybe, like I said, I don't know, maybe that's what they were going for, like, oh, we're actually using new technology to make it look like the old one, but it just felt like you weren't convincing me that I was looking at a, a movie that was supposed to be set just after uh, World War II. Okay. That's, that's just how I felt. Um, there are a few times that it was, that it worked. Sorry, I didn't mean to, like, to step on your choice. Oh. But it was one of the things that actually bothered me that I put in my brain while I we were watching. I think a lot of the time it looked pretty good. There were a few things, there were a few things here and there. Um, and I really do like, I loved the Channing Tatum dance number. Yes. Even though maybe it went on a little long because... It goes on pretty long, and I would rather we see some motivation scene out of it, him rather than, like, you know what? five minutes of dancing. This is what I think is the problem with the movie. It tries so hard to be like, look at us doing all this great old Hollywood stuff. Isn't old Hollywood cool? Aren't all these old movies that we're, that we're kind of homaging so cool? And I'm like, well, yeah, but... I also want to watch an actual movie, not just a bunch of clips of you recreating old movies. Old movies, and I think that's kind of the problem. They were so busy going, eh, eh. Look at Channing Tatum tap dance. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm very impressed by Channing, Ta Channing Tatum's dancing abilities, but I'm also here for like, I want to hear jokes in the plot, and sometimes you're not doing that. That's kind of the problem. It's kind of the problem. Kind of a problem. Yeah. So, um, I liked, you know what? I think the Western, the Western scene was the best recreation of like, of like that specific tone and what that kind of movie looked like. Mm -hmm. Um, that felt to me like just fake enough that it makes sense that it would look fake enough like that. Whereas the other ones looked a little too, it's like, it's not, this is an extreme example, but it's like... It's, it reminds me too much of like some of it, like George Lucas after he tinkered with the original trilogy where it looks, it looks a little too clean for the time when this was supposed to be made. That's what I'm saying. You, you get it what I'm saying? It looks like a very different process. It does. It doesn't like, there's just, and it just, I don't know if they meant to do that on purpose. Like, oh, we're just, like, they weren't trying to, like, that they, or if they were trying to and they just failed at it. Yes. You know, that, that's kind of how, this is a really frustrating movie because there were parts that I liked and there were parts where I was like, I don't understand this choice. I don't understand it. Um, sorry, we're not getting into the things we liked. Um. I like some of the weird stuff in it, because there is weird stuff. Yes, there's weird stuff at times. Um, the kidnappers, I like the fact that the scenes with them, it took a long time to get to them officially saying what was going down. I like the fact that they made, they made you wait for that. And I like the fact that um, like the setup of those scenes where they where they sit Clooney down and it's just a bunch of people like in very specific parts of this one room. Um, that was shot interestingly. And uh, I like the cinematography on that scene. Uh, and I also liked a lot of, like I think we said the, the individual performances. So Tatum, Tatum I really, I, I thought that Scarlett Johansson's uh, accent and everything was really funny, and she she had a good comedic timing. Yes. Um, I am not going to be able to pronounce his name, but Aldrich Aaron Rich. Reich. Aaron Reich. He's the guy that played the cowboy. Yes. Who I've never seen in, like, anything before, but he was, he was, like, one of the standouts. Yeah, he did a good job. Like, it really hit that, um, that he was over his head... And, uh, yeah, I don't know if we've seen him in anything in particular. He hasn't been in that many things. But, um, so, but you like them too? Yeah, you did a good job. Looking to see. Yeah, he's been in, like, nothing. He's, he was in one episode of Supernatural in 2005. 
Oh, that well, that brings it. Clear. Yeah, yeah, it totally. So and then the only other thing I even recognized the name from, which we never saw, was Beautiful Creatures, which was like a. It was very similar. To, it was like a Twilight kind of movie, except it was about like witches. But it was in that very YA romance thing. I think he actually played the love interest in that. But no, this is like, I'm really hoping that, that uh, this is his breakout role because he does a very good job. I, I was impressed by, by his performance because he had to do a lot and he Not, had to hit and, like a right tone. And he had to do an accent thing. He also has like, yeah, and he also has like the most, I don't want to say development, but he has the most screen time in order to breathe. Every, all the other characters have maybe a few scenes at most. Yeah, he got more time than Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Um, also, Tilda Swinton was a delight. She does double roles as these twin Truth. sisters. Uh, that was an entertaining character. With great names. Thor Thacker and Thessaly Thacker. And they're both writers. And they're write, they write different columns. And one of them is, wants to get the scoop. And the other one wants to get the scoop, but she wants to do it in like an artistic way. And she's not like her sister. The and, they, and they show up one after the other. Uh, and it's, it's quite delightful. I mean, it is, and also it's like, it's Tilda Swinton, and I'm just, I can't be mad at her. She's so good. But she's so good in this. Uh, Frances McDormand had essentially a cameo, more or less. She had one scene, she's an editor. Um, it was a little weird, and it felt like, it felt like it could have been played by someone else. Um, I still liked it, but you know, um, and there's I, another thing that was odd. Like, it just sort of... It has a scene, and it just sort of happens. And it has a little yeah. thing that happens in it. And then it's never done again. And it's like, why is this here? And again, I don't know if that's what they were going for or if it was just a mistake. And that's kind of the problem. I don't... I f can't feel the intention in this movie. I can't figure out if they were going for all this and making it feel disconnected for a point... Or if it was pointless and they just threw it together on the wall and said, ah. Um, another character who doesn't get a lot, who has one scene is Jonah Hill. And yet he's in like every trailer. Every trailer. I think someone who was leaving the theater said that he was on the poster. But I don't remember seeing that. Uh, Ralph Fiennes is good. I mean, he plays he plays his character quite well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other... Gigant. He's Lauren Lauren, yeah. the director. Yes. Um, of fine motion pictures. The whose fans expect quality. Yeah. Um, and then I'll say this much, and I know we were talking, we were trying to talk about the good things, but the thing I did not, I was not appreciative of was, um, so Alison Pill plays the wife of the, um, of the main, more or less main character, Josh Brolin's character, um, he's way older than her. Alison Pill is like our, like she, I think she's like 29 or 30. She's my choice for Squirrel Girl. So I have a very, because I just, um, on Comics Alliance, I just uh, contributed to a piece about um, MCU, like potential MCU shows and what we would want to see what comic we would want to see turned into a show. And I had said Squirrel Girl, and I had said Alison Pill, because I really like her... Uh, I liked her performance in Snowpiercer. That's always my go-to. Like, she can do manic and crazy and over-the-top. But she's, like, my age. And the fact that she's playing the wife of, like, a man way older than her... Like, I'm, I'm going to double-check uh, Josh Brolin's age. It just felt like a weird choice. She's only in the scene... In the, movie for one scene it's a lot and that's I think maybe the problem is that there's so many weird disjointed scenes where they're only the characters were there for like it was like a one day shoot for that actor and it's it's weird and it kind of feels like at times where you don't know if they're trying to make fun of and reference old Hollywood dumb stuff mm -hmm. and whether they're doing it right or not yeah I don't know if they execute everything right also, um, he is nearly 50, yeah. the, uh, Josh Brolin, the actor. I think the character he was playing was probably in his yeah, 50s already. Yeah, but it just is really off-putting to me. And maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe it shouldn't be that off-putting because I'm, I should be used to it by now. And it's not like it's, it's a rare thing. It just, like, 
her and like though that choice for that actress feels really bizarre to me. Yeah. Sorry, and 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 I shouldn't get that worked up about it because it's like a very small part of the movie. Um, I so kind of just trying to wrap up what we liked in a non spoilery way before we get to spoilers. I I also thought that George Clooney handled the character well because it is one of those characters that's kind of he's kind of flighty and he's kind of not the the absolute sharpest tool in the shed and I thought that he handled the that role, role well. fine yeah I mean he had one of the bigger roles and I think he it worked can we just go to spoilers I'm... I am ready for spoilers too thank you so spoilers I'm not even gonna cut cut no I'm not gonna cut just go. Come on, please cut. Just cut the damn. Talk. talk. All right, but you're going to cut that, right? Spoilers. I swear to God, if you don't cut that, I'm going to, like, break up with you. What? Yes. Now I can't cut it. (laughs) You better damn cut it. I'm going to use this as evidence. (laughs) No, you aren't. Talk spoilers. All right, spoilers. Um, So it's communists. That's right. The... The communist writers of Hollywood. Who've been secretly sending communist messages. <laughs> yes, into motion, ancient pictures. motion pictures who have been suddenly infusing Hollywood movies with communist propaganda. <laughs> Kidnap a movie star. So for that, ransom money. For ransom money so they could get their fair share. Which is like, okay, I get it. Like, Tanning in fact, Tatum's a communist defender. Also, yes, Tanning Tatum. In which case, like, again, the best part of the, of any, of the scene where he's not dancing is when he does his head sweep, and he's just dramatic, and it's so weird. Like, it's so weird. But it's weird in a way that works, in a way that other parts of the movie that are weird don't work. I want to see him play just, like... A Euro trash bad guy villain. I do too. I want to see him go over the top and goofy and like, I want to see that. Um, and also, I want him to dance in it because I've decided that every movie with Tanny Tatum needs to have a dance scene now. Did you just see him tap dance? He was great. It was so good. It was so ridiculously good. God damn. So, uh, I'm going to be, re- be really disappointed if I find out that they used the body double, but I don't think they did. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I'm sure he learned how to tap. It didn't look like he learned... <laughs> like, it looked like... Like, not... Like, I've seen more amazing tap dancing before. But he so, did a really yeah, good job. Yeah, he did an excellent job. Yeah. I'm just saying... But he also, like... But the actual dance... The other parts of the dancing It were looked good like too. he learned how to tap dance for the role. I don't know. Maybe... You could be completely wrong on this. I anyway. I'm completely wrong. I'm completely so, wrong all the time. So... But no, he's he's so good, but he's in two scenes. He's in two whole scenes, and it's really... it's re- That's really disappointing to me. Um, and he's sort of like the villain of the movie in some way, so... Yeah. Um, and then... I don't know what this plot was to, I know. to connect Clooney and so, get money, and then they just throw the money at the guy, and he's like, there's this money here. I feel like... I feel like they must have rewritten that scene. It doesn't make any sense because, like, the whole time they were telling him fair share for the writers, but then the com- then the weirdest thing with the communist sub comes up and Channing Tatum leaps on, and then they're like, oh, we want to give you the money, which makes no sense. Like, it has nothing to do with what they've talked about. And then... And then they throw him the money, but then his little dog jumps into his arms, so he drops the money, and then the money sinks. And you would think that one of them, like, even in the freezing cold, would just jump in and grab the tw- the $200,000. It makes no sense. Also, was that supposed to be Einstein? I don't know. I don't know! But there was a guy that looked suspicious, that was German, with crazy hair and smoked the pipe, and he was part of the Communist Party, and I don't know if they were referencing Einstein or not. So, I mean, so the joke is, it's supposed, it's a send-up of Hollywood, and the joke is that, you know, this was something that they feared the Communist Party infiltrating the writers of Hollywood for so long. So that's clearly a, the joke of it, and that's fine. It just said so much of this movie did not work. And the ending of that plot thread just ended. And again, if and that's I, what they were going for, it didn't feel like it. It felt like it was a mistake. And obviously Channing Tatum was sort of in on the Clooney capture, but like, because he's the one that picks up the briefcase, right? And it was his house. Yeah. 
And so, and it's like... Then why was he here? And then why was the sub... Nothing about this makes sense. And, and what I don't, was the money even for? I don't... Yeah, was it for the writers? Was it not? I don't know if I'm missing something and I'm just like... There's some clever clue that they were... That they had revealed in the movie and we didn't realize it. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out if the whole... The, the, um, what was the company that, uh, was trying to hire, what's his, uh, Josh Brolin? Yeah. We're, like, they show the atom bomb thing, and I'm like, that feels like a really specific shot of them showing the picture of the atom bomb, and I have no clue what that was supposed to mean. I feel like we're missing some clever, some clever directorial choice in some of these things, and I don't know if if I'm missing it or if they just did a bad job. <laughs> and I don't and I'm frustrated by that. You know? Yes. Otherwise it's like a not that great of a movie. Yeah. I don't know whether whether any of these specific choices actually say anything or not, and that's bugging me. Maybe when I rewatch it I'll have a better understanding of it. Um so, uh, besides that, um, oh, also, uh, George Clooney's character is, uh, queer, and we find out that, I, it was implied that also Chaney Tatum's character was clearly also sleeping with that director, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, uh... I mean, that whole dance scene was basically coded, the musical. There are so many, I mean, at the end, they were just all, the men were all dancing with each other. And then the scene stops when a bunch of other men enter the bar, and that's that shot of of Channing Tatum with a man's ass right next to his face. And they're like, hey, this bar looks all right. <laughs> subtext, basically. It's called subtext, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen, nervous. Anyway, so, yeah, um... <laughs> And that was the other thing, like, that. there was that whole, like, so much of what's over George Clooney's character's head is this incident with this movie that they keep referencing, and you kind of know exactly what it's going to be. Like, I knew exactly what they were going to, what it was going to, so I don't know if it was supposed to be a big reveal that he was actually, he had committed sodomy with his director or not. Because it didn't feel like a big reveal. It felt like, oh yeah, I assumed it was something gay. Because that's what happened in Hollywood that you would... Scandalous. Yeah, that would be scandalous. I mean, I guess there could have been like a thousand other things that would also have been scandalous in Hollywood. But it just it just made sense. Maybe it wasn't scandalous because... Because of, um... What's the word? Uh... Or maybe it wasn't it wasn't that that was scandalous, but like the reveal that it was the one director that we've seen. Also, did the director want Channing Tatum's character for that for that role? Because I think that might have been a thing. I think that might have been a hint. I don't know. I thought that was who he said. I think that's who he said he wanted for the role, and that's why he was mad that the cowboy guy showed up. Showed up. So, um. <sighs> Would we watch this movie? Would I suggest this movie? I would say yes, but with, like, the big asterisk of it's a mess. It's an enjoyable mess. It's an enjoyable, unorganized, disconnected mess. But there are enough scenes in it that I truly enjoyed. I just didn't like the movie as a whole. I can agree with that. Which is disappointing, because I was so gung-ho to enjoy this movie. Trailers oversold it. It's super oversold it. Um, and what I liked, I liked. And I think it's worth watching once. I don't know if I would watch it again. Maybe I would watch it again to try to see if the plot threads made more... Had more of a connection. It's a rental. It's a rental or like if you if you can find it when it's on in a cheap theater or a matinee. I think it's a matinee if... Look at what else is coming out in February. We Deadpool. had so many... Eh. I'm. I will. I will. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Both of those seem like Zoolander they might be. <laughs> All right, and then also like, 
Actually, and I still think, I don't know if I want to see it in theaters, but I do think the Jesse Owens movie could be actually solid. But there were so many trailers that we saw in front of this movie that looked awful. Where they were like, ins like bad inspirational movies. The Jesse Owens one actually I think could be solid because it seemed to get into actual like political issues both at the Olympics and also, oh, there was that skiing movie, that like long jump movie that looks bad. Also the uh, George Clooney, uh, Julia. Oh yeah, that also looks really bad. That movie looks bad. That looks terrible, where it's like he's supposed to be, oh, that one crazy money guy on And like... that's a terrible miscasting, by the way. Yeah, I think, you know what, when, when I saw that, I realized... What it was because someone Clooney else was complaining. Do, George so, Clooney doesn't do manic. Yeah, exactly. Um, but someone was complaining about like, okay, who ca who did who did that real life guy have to play or have to pay to get Clooney cast as him? <laughs> oh, I would like the the handsome movie star to play me, please. Money, please. Money, please. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, the weirdest one, the weirdest trailer, I know we don't usually talk about trailers, but I wanted to get to this. So there was this movie that where it was set up that like this girl that like smoked pot and was like, you know, crazy and stuff, uh, decides to open her own sorority. So I was like, okay, well, I guess that's going to be, and then it turns out that it's the, uh, neighbor sequel. It's the neighbor sequel. And I will say, you know what? Kudos to the trailer for totally making faking me you out. for faking me out and making me think it's an original. It's like nope. There, at first, I like for a split second, I was like, I guess Seth Rogen's in another. Oh wait, no, it's not another fraternity movie. It's it's just this. I'm pretty sure they set up. I'm 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 pretty sure this is one of those things where they actually set up that sequel in the last movie and. It, and so you were just seeing the prequel. That first scene was the prequel to the end of the first movie. <laughs> where, you know, we're like, well, we're done with those fraternities. And then suddenly the sororities come up. Hey, we just got the house. Next door. Oh, no. I, I guarantee you that's how the, la the, how the last movie ended. I have not seen it, and I can pretty much guarantee that's how the last movie ended. So um, it's literally just the same movie. <laughs> But this time, Zac Efron oh God. helps. Oh, God, though. The creepiest thing, though, is that, like, there's this whole thing, which wasn't, the joke wasn't too bad at first, because he was, like, he was trying to get out of his car, or trying to get into his car, and he gets into his car, and all the girls are, like, blocking with their body. He's like, ah, oh, they're trying, they're using their sexuality against me, which was a funny joke when it was, like, when it was, like, literally using, like, their sexuality, not, like, manipulating him sexually. And then, and then he starts to get into it. Was like, oh no, don't throw your body on me. And I was like, they're like eighteen, maybe. You are, you are well into your like what late thirties, forties. This is gross. You, you ogling them is gross. The only reason why this movie would have worked is if he absolutely did not see them as sexual beings and just as like young women who are like messing up his life the fact that then like that they're hinting at the fact that like he's actually into them creeps me out and that was like the last shot of that trailer and it creeped me out yeah um <sighs> what was the other movie i'm trying to think i can't think there was another there was movie. that long jump one yeah what? but uh there was another oh movie. The Melissa McCarthy one. Yes. Which honestly was the best of all of them, but I still think it could be a train wreck. But it's literally just, um, it's just a ruthless businesswoman takes over the Girl Scouts. Which could be great, or it could be just god awful. It's kind of like that with Miss Melissa McCarthy, who I like and who I'm really excited to see in Ghostbusters. She looked like, like, um, you know how, like, a lot of her earlier films were a lot of like sort of raunchy platformy stuff. Yeah. This one looked more built on line comedy. That's true. But um yeah, she just seems like a horrible human being and she get and she goes to jail and then she comes out and she's broke. And so she decides to take over the Girl Scouts. Oh, Kristen Shaw's in it. I'm yes. excited about that. 
And um, and also uh, Kristen, not Kristen Stewart. Uh, Kristen, shoot, she was the, she was. It's gonna drive me crazy. She's been in like a thousand things, but she was Veronica Mars. Yes. I can't remember her name. Um, name. That does that helps me zero. How about less than zero? All right, I think we're at the point with this damn review where our brains are fried because this movie was a mess and we were trying to remember everything. I also want dinner. You also want dinner? Yes. Well, Corn beef roast in the crock pot. <laughs> Eleven hours now. Should be delicious. No one cares about our dinner. I do. No one of importance cares about our dinner. Uh, all right. No, I think we're out. We're out. But this is what this movie has done to us. We, like, I'm not even, like, mad at it. I'm just, like, confused. Frustrated Which, uh, confusion. Yeah. And then, but then I think about, like, the four scenes that I absolutely liked a lot. And then I'm like, aw, I wish you were in better movies. You scenes right there. I wish those performances were in a better movie. Ugh. So... We're out. Katie, Mike, just play something.com and we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>